School Days According to Humphrey, Chapter 3, Rules, Rules, Rules. Usually I enjoy a nice morning nap, but there was so much going on that morning I didn't have time to settle in for a doze until the strange students left for recess. But my nap didn't last long, because when the students returned, I heard Mrs. Brisbane talking, and she sounded worried, worried, worried. Harry didn't come back, she said. Did anyone see him on the playground? Sure, Simon said. We shot some hoops. What happened to him? She asked. Simon shrugged. I don't know. Mrs. Brisbane frowned. I may have to send someone to look for him. I'll find him, said Holly, waving her hand. Send me. Just then the door opened and Mrs. Wright, the physical education teacher, entered, pulling Harry along with her. Mrs. Brisbane, I believe Harry is your student. She said, I found him on the pl playground, lottering. Lottering? That was a new word to me. I wish I had a dictionary in my cage. But well, Mrs. Wright added, then... When the bell rings, students should not dwaddle. Dwaddle? What a funny word, too. I thought this teacher solved this problem last year, Mrs. Wright said. I noticed the silver whistle around her neck and crossed my paws so that she wouldn't blow it. But I see she didn't. Harry, hurry. Harry, why are you late, Mrs. Brisbane asked the boy. Did you hear the bell? Harry nodded. Did you see the other students lining up to come inside? She continued. Harry nodded again. Yes, and I was about to get in line when I noticed this cool anthill near my foot. I almost stepped on it. It was the biggest one I've ever saw. So you lost track of time, Mrs. Brisbane said. Yes, Harry said. Mrs. Wright shook her head, dwaddling. Very well, take your seat, Mrs. Brisbane told Harry. Next time, get in line. You, We have rules, Mrs. Brisbane, Mrs. Wright said. I hope your students obey them. Mrs. Brisbane waited for Mrs. Wright to leave. Then she said, speaking of rules, I think it's time to go over the rules of this classroom. None too soon, I thought. There was nothing too surprising about the rules Mrs. Brisbane had printed on a poster earlier that morning. Number one, follow directions as soon as they are given. Number two, raise your hand and wait to be called on before speaking. Number three, stay in your seat until the while the teacher is teaching. Four, keep your hands, legs, and other objects to yourself. Five, walk inside the school and use your inside voice. Six, treat people the way you'd like to be treated. As I read the rules, I wondered how good it was. I was at following them. I try to follow the teacher's directions, but what can I do if no one gives me directions? For example, what if no one tells me to bring a summer box to school? Still, those rules got me to thinking. The rule about raising your hand made me miss raise your hand Heidi, who sometimes forgot the rule last year, but I liked her anyway. I can't stay in my seat because I don't actually have a seat. I always try to stay in my cage where the teacher is teaching. I try to keep my paws to myself and I hope that dogs, cats, and all other creatures do the same. I also try to remember to walk inside the school, but I have to admit sometimes I roll in my hamster ball. I always use my inside voice because even when I shout, it's not very loud. And I treat people the way I like to be treated. At least I mean to. But Mrs. Brisbane talked about the consequences for breaking the rules, when she, which made my whiskers wiggle. Warning was bad enough, but so was a timeout. But a note home? Eek. I thought it would be terrible until I realized that my home actually was room 26. Next came a phone call home, and I don't have a phone. And finally, a student who broke the rules again would be sent to the principal's office. I like Principal Morales a lot, but I don't think I'd like to have to go to his office and tell him I've broken a rule. He'd be unsqueakably disappointed in me. I was imagining myself sitting in the principal's office after breaking one of the rules when I suddenly heard Mrs. Brisbane said, there's another rule in room 26. All students must treat Humphrey and Og with the greatest respect. My ears perked up. Did you hear that, Og? I squeaked. She's talking about us. Boing, boing. Og splashed around in his tank, which made the strange children laugh. Mrs. Brisbane explained that the students would get to take turns bringing me home for a weekend. But first, we'd have to learn how to take care of me. And while Og stayed in the classroom for weekends, on weekends, because he didn't feel the need to be fed as often as I did, they would learn to take care of him as well. When the teacher gathered a new group around the cage, she put on, on some gloves so that she could show them how to clean the cage. Who wants to hold Humphrey, she asked. Not surprisingly, lots, lots, lots of new students volunteered. Mrs. Brisbane slowly and gently picked me up. Never poke your finger in the cage, she said. Give Humphrey time to get used to you. Will he bite, Phoebe asked nervously. No way, I squeaked. Humphrey hasn't bitten anyone yet, but if someone poked a finger in his face, I wouldn't blame him, Mrs. Brisbane said. When I had a hamster, he bit my finger, Joey said, but my mom said it was because he thought it was a carrot. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. 
And if you don't wash your hands before handling the hamster, you might smell food you've eaten and think you're something to eat too. I don't like to disagree with the teacher, but first of all, many humans have hands that don't smell anything like I'd want to eat. And I'm smart enough to tell the difference between a carrot and a finger. Let's see, why don't you take him, Kelsey, she said. Kelsey looked surprised. I'm sure I did too. Kelsey looked like a nice girl, but it didn't seem as if she, it didn't, it did seem as if she could be more careful. Hold him in your hand like this, Mrs. Rosane transferred me to Kelsey's outstretched hand. Make him feel very safe. Cup your hand around his head. Make a little roof. I think he likes that. I do like that as a matter of fact. Kelsey was so excited to be holding me, her hand actually shook a little. I suddenly remembered about her broken arm and a broken leg, and I hope I wouldn't be end up being a broken hamster. Don't worry, Humphrey, I'll be careful with you, she whispered. I relaxed, and so did she. The shaking stopped. Can I pet him, Simon asked? Gently, Mrs. Brisbane told him. He stroked my back with his fingers. It felt unsqueakably nice. Then Mrs. Brisbane got busy cleaning my cage. She took everything out, even my water bottle, and put in a new bucket of soapy water. Luckily, my mirror in, is firmly attached to my cage in, in its state, as well as my notebook hiding behind it. Next, she took a brush and brush, brush, brushed everything clean. After that, she took out some soft, papery bedding out of my cage. That's it, Holly said, pointing to the corner. That's Humphrey's bathroom area, Mrs. Brisbane replied. Those are his droppings. His poo? Thomas's eyes opened wide with surprise. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. Ew, poo. Thomas said. Somebody giggled. Then all the kids started chattering. Ew, poo, ew, poo, in a very rude way. Mrs. Brisbane shushed them. Come on, it's perfectly natural. Perfectly natural, I repeated. Besides, where else am I supposed to go? May I hold Humphrey, Rosie asked. I really know how to hold a guinea pig. I already know how to hold a guinea pig. Mrs. Brisbane carefully moved me from Kelsey's palm to Rosie's. Her hand didn't shake one bit. Next, the teacher scrubbed the bottom and sides of my cage until they were unsqueakably clean. She then let helpful Holly and just Joey put new bedding in my cage until Phoebe filled my water bottle and Paul F. put fresh nurture nibbles in my feeder. Yum. Paul G. put his big, put my wheel back in to make sure it was spinning properly while Harry and Thomas put everything else back in. It looks and, and smells a lot better now, Humphrey, Mrs. Brisbane said as she gently carried me from Rosie's hand back to the cage. Check it out. I hopped onto the shiny clean wheel and went back and gave it all I had. Look at Humphrey go, Thomas T. True cried out. He must be going a million miles an hour. He couldn't be going a million miles an hour. He'd break the sound barrier at 768 miles. And I don't hear a sonic boom, Small Paul said. I was impressed, but I had to admit, I felt as if I was going a million miles an hour. I guess Thomas was just exaggerating a little, Mrs. Brisbane said. Thomas exaggerates a lot, Small Paul said. Now students, no bickering, Mrs. Brisbane told them. Let's get back to our places. I hopped off my wheel and settled down in the freshly, lovely fresh bedding. Phoebe raised, raised her hand and Mrs. Brisbane called on her. Did you say we get to take Humphrey home? At one time or another, yes, was the answer. Phoebe's face lit up. If you don't get a turn right away, don't worry. You'll get him eventually as long as your parents sign a permissions form. After all, families don't always have time for a hamster on the weekend. Phoebe's smile faded away, but I think it was the only one who noticed. I was the one smiling when Mrs. Brisbane asked students who'd like to take me home, and every hand went up. Maybe these new humans weren't quite as strange as I thought. Later, Mrs. Brisbane rearranged the seating in the classroom. First, she had everyone take their belongings to the sides of the room. Then she told each student where to sit. There were a few groans, but mostly the students settled down without complaint until Mrs. Brisbane went back to teaching and made some notes on the board. Suddenly, a hand began waving. Teacher? Mrs. Brisbane looked up. Please call me Mrs. Brisbane, she said. What is it, Kelsey? I can't see him from here. He pointed, she pointed to tall Paul, who was seated directly in front of her. I can't imagine it would be hard to see with Paul G blocking her view. My mistake, Mrs. Brisbane said. I must have gotten the Paul's mixed up. Paul Green, can you switch places with Paul Fletcher? Okay. Tall Paul gathered his belongings and moved toward the side of the room. Small Paul picked up his notebook and backpack and moved toward the front. He couldn't block anyone's view. Somewhere in the middle, they almost walked right into each other. Watch out, I squeaked. Everyone laughed except the two Pauls. They carefully avoided walking into each other. I noticed that they were avoiding looking at each other. 
Now you can see Kelsey, Mrs. Brisbane asked. I can see fine, Kelsey answered. Mrs. Brisbane continued with the lesson. I couldn't concentrate. I was watching the two Pauls staring at their desk. I was glad, glad, glad when the school bell rang at the end of the day and only Mrs. Brisbane, Og, and I were left in the room. Phew, it had been a tiring day. Like most hamsters, I feel more during, sleep more during the day than at night. But with so much going on, I hadn't gotten much napping done. But there was no time to sleep now. I needed time for myself to try and figure things out. I was deep in thought when I heard a familiar, friendly voice. I survived, the voice said. Congratulations, Mrs. Brisbane replied. I scampered up to the tree branch near the top of my cage. As one of my favorite humans, Mrs. Mack entered the room. Miss Mack was beautiful. Miss Mack was sweet. Miss Mack was amazing. If it hadn't been for Miss Mack, I'd probably still be living in a boring old petorama, hoping that someone would give me a real home. Miss Mack bought me there and brought me to room 26. When she went to Brazil for a while, I had to live with Mrs. Brisbane. I wasn't sure about her at first, but she turned out to be a great teacher. Now Miss Mack was back, but where had she been all day? I sank into the chair next to Mrs. Brisbane's desk. And I learned a I have a lot to learn, she said. You'll be fine, Mrs. Brisbane assured her. But first grade isn't easy. And that's where Miss Mack was. She was teaching first grade at Longfellow School. It's exciting, but there's so much to teach them, Mrs. Mack continued. I wish I had Humphrey and Og to help. She glanced over our way and waved. Hi, guys, she said. Hi, Miss Mack. You'll be great in first grade. Mark my words. I squeaked in encouragement while Og splashed loudly in his tank. How did your day go, Miss Mack asked Mrs. Brisbane. I think it'll be a good year, Mrs. Brisbane said. Want to grab a cup of coffee? Would I, Miss Mack answered. While Mrs. Brisbane gathered up her things, Miss Mack came over to see Og and me. I leaned close to my cage and saw a big, happy smile. Her sparkling eyes, she smelled of apples. Maybe I can borrow you once in a while, she whispered. I hope so, I whispered back. But unfortunately, I know all she heard was a very soft speak. Then Og and I were left alone, left to think over the strange happenings of the first day of school. Thomas does exaggerate, I said to my neighbor. I think that fish story was a tall tale. Boing, he answered. Phoebe was very forgetful, and Holly was very, very, very helpful, I added. Boing, he agreed. I wonder why Harry couldn't hurry up. I said after a little more thinking. Boing, boing, my friend replied. But I don't have time to worry about these strange students, I continued, because I'm busy worrying about what will happen to my real friends from year 26, the ones from last year. I was silent for a few seconds, and then I squeaked what was really on my mind. Am I ever going to see them again? Humphrey Rules of School. Treat hamsters the way you'd like to be treated, which includes telling them where your friends have gone.